that information about the expertise of the staff was there all along, but it was below the surface. What the detective of influence has to do is find those things that move people positively in our direction and bring them to the surface so they are conscious to the people who we want to respond to them. Even though that can produce change, it usually does so by virtue of power. I'm talking about influence. Influence comes from a different kind of an authority, an expert, someone who has knowledge in an, in a, an arena and therefore is accorded persuasion by virtue of that person's uh, competence and expertise. It is who you are, what aura you present, but it's also what you say and do in making your request. Dr. Robert Cialdini, a psychology professor at Arizona State University, has spent years studying and writing about persuasion. It's a skill that can be learned, can be cultivated, and in fact, if you understand the principles of influence, you can become significantly more effective in asking for whatever you want in our society. The first is reciprocity, reciprocation. Uh, people prefer to say yes in return for something they have been given, something they've received. Second principle, the principle of scarcity, the one that says people want more of those things they can have less of. See it all around you. Right? Uh, people lining up to get access to products or services that are in scarce supply. Next principle is the principle of authority and it has to do, I think, with a way of arranging ourselves in the current economic environment which is rife with uncertainty. I've never seen such an, a volatile, uncertain economic market as currently exists. Right? Next principle for us to consider is the principle of consistency. The one that says people want to be consistent with what they have already said or done. So what I'm going to ask you to do before you ever deliver a recommendation, get people to speak and to write down, because people live up to what they write down, have them speak to you and write down their priorities, their values, and their goals. Next principle is consensus, one that says people want to follow the lead of similar others. One way they can decide what they should do, again, under conditions of uncertainty, like the conditions that exist right now, that you're confronted with, where you've got people who are freezing. They're sitting on the fence. They will not move because they don't know what to do. One way to reduce that uncertainty is to give them evidence of what a lot of people just like them are doing or have been doing in this situation. Finally is liking. No surprise that people want to say yes to those they know and like. Right, that's easy. What's not so easy is how do we comport ourselves to produce that rapport optimally with people that we want to deal with. With everyone's permission, we showed the tapes to Professor Robert Cialdini, a social psychologist at Arizona State University. He studies the science of selling, and we wanted his insights into what makes them so persuasive. What I noticed about all three of the people that we, we, we dealt with, they were people persons. They liked interacting with people. Cialdini noticed that all three also asked their customers many personal questions, a key tool, he says, to accomplishing two purposes. In the bargain of asking those questions, uh, not only does he get information that he can use later on, but he is perceived as somebody who's genuinely interested in me. Do you normally travel by yourself or do you have uh, to yes. with you? I, I, I'm my daughter. I have a nine-year-old daughter oh. still at home. Now, he's found out, for example, that this particular customer has a nine-year-old daughter. You'll see later on, he's going to 
raise that point. You know, your daughter probably has friends that you might want to put in the back seat here sure. and they can sit comfortably. Sure. As Cialdini says, regardless of whether a customer is buying something big and expensive like a new car or a home, or something small and personal like skin cream, they're more likely to lay out the cash if they trust you. Who would you say is the most successful um, financial investor of our time? Warren Buffett. Everybody says Warren Buffett. Well, I, I agree. And I've been getting War the Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway, stockholder report for the, the last seven years. Uh, anybody know, by the way, what a single share of Berkshire Hathaway stock is going for on the new... Yes. $104,000 a share. There's never been anything like it. There's never been anything like it in the history right, of this country. And all that they are, Berkshire Hathaway, it's a holding company. They have no product, right? They are only offering credibility. How do they stoke credibility in the minds of their, their shareholders and potential investors? I've noticed something in each of the last seven of these shareholder reports. Before they describe what has gone well that year, they mention something that went wrong that year. On the first page, they mention something that went wrong. And then they launch into a set of descriptions of the good things that have happened. Warren Buffett and his partner, Charlie Munger, know how to use this principle of credibility in a way that Bill Ford doesn't. Why? Why do they know when somebody as highly placed as, as William Ford doesn't know how to use it? Well, I will claim that it's because Buffett and Munger read psychology books. They read psychology books. They know that the markets are not made up of econometric models. They're made up of people. So if they would understand psychology, they would understand the circumstances of the market substantially better. How do I know that they read psychology books? Because at the last seven shareholder meetings, there's only been one book that they've recommended to their stockholders at each of those seven meetings. And it wasn't a book written by George Soros or John Templeton or Peter Lynch. It was a book written by a psychologist. Modesty prevents me from naming <laughs> that psychologist. But, but, here's the point. You can do this. You can do this. I'm not even asking you to change the words now. I'm just asking you to change the sequence of the words to get the power of these psychological principles working in your behalf. Okay, the science tells us what we can do, how we can infuse our messages with the power of these six principles of influence. If you will align yourself with the power of those principles, I'm convinced you'll become significantly more successful in your sales endeavors.